good morning and good evening wherever you are and whatever time zone you are in uh, first of all thanks for joining so today i'm going to discuss about the subject called uh, deep learning so uh, let me start with some context so if you are a software engineer or ml practitioner or data scientist or do you have any experience in python programming languages or java dot net anything and if you are interested in learning neural networks and deep learning to solve the real world problems then you are in the right place so by the end of this session uh, i'm sure you will be left out with uh, some motivation and basics uh, about the deep uh, deep learning with the help of these uh, two motivation and uh, 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 basics understanding you can even understand the state of art models and different complex architectures as well so uh, let me start uh, the session with my motivation few years back uh, when i start exploring about this subject deep learning i found lot of resources the lot of resources in the form of blogs books and uh, massive open online courses uh and video lectures as well uh, so uh, ju- as a initially as a beginner i went through few of those resources so during that time what i re- recollected uh, i recollected one of uh, my childhood story that is uh, a blind man describing different parts of an elephant uh, just like this so uh, they described different parts just like uh, this is a fan python tree and wall and thread so the reason why i recollected this one is because of the various explanations about the neural networks so in that story one version is uh, whatever they described is true but uh, what uh, they, uh, where they went wrong here is because they can't see the large statue uh, with visual explanation which vision because they are blind so uh various explanations uh, uh, from different resources about neural network some uh, someone is saying neural network is a mathematical function takes the input and produces the output and uh, in some other uh, uh, resource they explain about the neural network is a computational graph and uh, neural network is made up of layers with neurons and neural network is a universal approximation function so uh, that uh, that can in theory represent the solution to any supervised learning problem so ideally a neural network is uh, consists of all these things so so as a beginner uh, right uh, uh, as a beginner uh, any neural network explanation uh, which feels like lacking something uh, that something is nothing but a visual explanation so uh, here uh, is my attempt to provide you a visual explanation with all these uh, uh, four concepts that is what uh, i'm trying to uh, uh, explain you in next coming few slides if this sounds interesting let's get started uh, my name is vamsi suman and i am an engineer by education and i am a software professional uh, who is working in uh, python in cyber security domain by choice and i am a continuous learner and community speaker by passion so here is the outline uh, about uh, this talk so first of all i'll start with uh, some confusing buzzwords after that uh, uh, i will explain you uh, the basics of the neural network and one more important basics uh, basic that is gradient descent algorithm and one more interesting topic that is uh, representation power of functions and feed forward neural networks and back propagation and different kind of uh, optimization algorithms finally summary and learnings so this is the agenda of this talk so let's get started with understanding about the confusing buzzwords what are those buzzwords these are all the buzzwords uh, i think by this time you might have uh, known about these buzzwords data science ai ml dl nlp computer vision image processing speech technology reinforcement learning these are all the buzzwords if you know about all these things perfect well if you don't know about all these things so as a beginner uh, we should know about all these buzzwords then only we know what is our interest where do we fit that's from where we can start learning about these things uh, 
so whenever we do have some confusion uh, what do we do in general we go and look at some definitions these are all the definitions but i don't want to spend time on explaining about these definitions instead of that i'll try to explain you in a different way to answer to a particular question that is what is artificial intelligence so what is artificial intelligence okay to answer to this question i will come in a reverse way as a human uh, we do have some natural intelligence right so with the help of some natural intelligence what and all abilities we we do have that is we can see with our eyes we can see we can talk we can talk we can read and write uh, the uh, articles we can read and write and we can make some planning and decision decisions also in our daily life right so as a human having natural intelligence if we have these abilities then why can't we achieve these abilities with a machine if a machine is having a vision ability that comes under computer vision if a machine is having speech ability that comes under audio domain if a machine is having uh, the read and write ability that is comes under nlp natural language processing similarly if machine is having uh, planning and decision comes under reinforcement learning so after having these abilities what and all task we are able to do if you see here uh, clearly we can classify which is horse and which is giraffe here this is one task with uh, which we can see uh, uh, with our eyes we can we can perform with our eyes and similarly we can identify uh, the handwritten digits amnist data set after identification we can draw a bounding box around the object as well so here we can convert the text to speech speech to text and in meetings we clearly identify based on the audio who is speaking also and uh, uh with nlp we can convert uh, the hindi language into english different language conversions and uh, we can perform uh, which mail we can classify the mails which are spam which are uh, social which are updates which are primary uh, just you might be aware of uh, these things in your gmail and so in planning and decision making uh, you might have heard about uh, driverless cars autonomous uh, autonomous cars and uh, uh, gamings robotics these are all uh, in this domain uh, planning and decision making is done by the machine how these tasks are performed by the machine with the help of few methods so before a artificial intelligence uh, there is a expert systems is there so what is expert systems is uh, the domain expert uh, defines some set of rules so based on those rules we use some if else conditions to write uh, some code if a, if uh, an animal is having a long neck uh, that is uh, uh, that we can classify it as a giraffe if a animal is having bushy tail then we can classify it as a horse so till then expert systems goes went well if you are trying to classify only two animals that is fine what is the case if you are trying to classify 10 animals 100 animals and 1000 and so on we can't write the if else conditions uh, describing these uh, animal features right so that's where machine learning comes into the picture so what machine learning is doing is we give some data to the machine let the machine learn by itself by identifying the hidden patterns so after identifying those patterns what and all task uh, a machine is able to doing is that these are all the machine learning algorithms classification algorithm regression algorithm and some uh, decision tree algorithms uh, these are all the methods by using these methods we can achieve these kind of task so machine learning is uh, successful then uh, why deep learning what are the drawbacks of machine learning uh if data is uh, very less less quantity then machine learning is providing a better accuracy if data is huge then machine learning is not giving a better accuracy so that's where deep learning comes into the picture 
how deep learning uh, is giving you a better accuracy is because of the different types of architectures these are all uh, deep neural networks recurrent neural network convolution neural networks so this convolution neural networks uh, already proved in uh, computer vision domain it is giving a better accuracy we reached over 99.99% accuracy in computer vision with uh, the cnn architecture and uh, this recurrent neural network is very famous in speech audio domain and one more drawback about uh, this machine learning is some uh, engineering effort is required so uh, which is not required in deep learning when comes to reinforcement learning what is reinforcement learning is so machine learn itself by identifying by its previous mistakes that is where uh, self driven autonomous cars and gaming uh, gaming systems are using now if uh, anyone is asking about what is artificial intelligence is nothing but a artificial intelligence encompasses all of these abilities abilities task and methods this is what i just described in machine learning some uh, engineering activity is required we have to extract features and then perform classification whereas in deep learning feature act extraction uh, is done by the architecture uh, deep neural network architecture itself and perform the classification how means this is uh, how uh, we are uh, going to learn so after revisiting the buzzwords uh, this is how we can classify that so artificial intelligence is uh, uh, combining all of these things machine learning deep learning reinforcement learning these are all methods and computer vision natural language processing speech these are all abilities so why deep learning is so famous these days because with the help of the deep learning uh, algorithms a deep neural network recurrent neural network lstm so many various uh, auto encoder decoder convolution neural networks vgg lxnet because of these different network architectures we can able to perform these abilities so that's why deep learning is so famous so uh, to perform that uh, we need huge we already have huge amount of data available over the internet to process these data we are also migrated from cpu to gpu gpu to tpu as well that's why deep learning is so famous these days so uh, what and all mathematical concepts used in deep learning so mainly three concepts widely used linear algebra calculus and probability theory and this is one of the famous quotation which i like so behind every machine learning success there is a mathematics and statics involved so you no need to worry about uh, all these maths but if you know as a beginner if you know about uh, the simple math why we are doing if we do like this what is going to happen then the subject is going to be interested and uh, here is the machine learning jargon cloud what i am trying to do is uh, a complete story of machine learning in just six elements what are those six elements so these are the six elements so this is a jargon cloud uh, in machine learning uh, in machine learning subject what and all terminology we are using these things what i am trying to do is we are just arranging these terminology in six uh, steps so data means we can fetch the data anywhere from uh, the internet facebook twitter amazon etc after the, after collecting the data what task you are trying to do whether are you doing a classification or regression or generation what kind of task you are going to do that should be clear uh, in order to solve a, any machine learning problem so after you are clear about the task what is the model is uh, model selection is important are you going to select uh, with a perceptron neuron feed forward neural network or auto encoder uh, any uh, generative adversarial networks or gan anything so with respect to the problem whatever you are solving you have to select the model and after that what laws you are going to use uh, are you going to use mean square error laws or cross entropy uh, max uh, margin these are all the laws what laws is telling is how far you are uh, prediction from the ground truth that's what this loss parameter is telling to us so what is learning algorithm 
so uh, the learning what learning is doing is uh, once you know how far your uh, uh, prediction is so in order to reduce the loss we have to update some parameters that's what learning algorithm is doing the main goal of this learning algorithm is in a, a reduction of loss uh, as close as equal to zero so after learning first of all uh, final stage is evaluation and just uh, one simple analogy is in our schooling days we study and the final exams we give uh, a final exam so in final exam our uh, instructor is going to evaluate what and all uh, answers we make similarly in machine learning also we are doing the same evaluation step so uh, linear algebra is widely used in model and uh, calculus is widely used in learning and probability is uh, uh, used in model and loss functions wherever it is required so let's go with uh, section 2 basics of neural networks so just uh, uh, see this slide it is not a design these are all the neural network architectures if you see here Uh, deep convolutional neural network architecture deep uh, convolutional neural networks so these are all the auto encoder variational auto encoder these are all the architectures if you didn't understand that is absolutely fine i am trying to give a illustrative proof uh, illustrative view of this neural network suppose let us assume you are trying to construct a house so what and all the things you are going to do uh you have to uh, do the foundation and after that uh, you have to arrange the bricks and cement in such a way that uh, whatever construction shape you wanted right uh, in construction so if you want to grow your house vertically sorry, anyone is speaking okay if you want to grow your house vertically then uh, how do you arrange the bricks you increase the number of layers uh, vertically if you want to grow your uh, house widely if you have a wider space then you arrange the bricks widely so instead of uh, three bricks we you arrange four bricks right in construction uh, what and all types of bricks uh, available so we can see clay brick uh, sand ash brick fire brick and hollow uh, bricks different kinds of bricks are available so if you correlate this example with our neural networks so to construct this architecture what is uh, the basic building block in neural network is neurons just like different kinds of bricks different kinds of neurons available to us that is mp neuron perceptron sigma neuron so after arranging the neurons uh, can't we visualize what we are trying to achieve so let us assume this is the input so from each and every pixel is nothing but our input so let us assume these are all the neurons we connected these neurons with other neurons in three three different uh, hidden layers are there here in this architecture let us assume so we connected these neurons with each other neurons what we are trying to uh, achieve here is in first hidden layer these neurons are trying to construct edges in second hidden layer these neurons are trying to uh, uh, detect the corners and contours in third hidden layer it trying it it try to create a object parts so if you see here this is uh, just like look a car uh, tire and this is a person this is some kind of animal on top of this if you apply your probability skills then whichever uh, probability is more uh, we are going to predict that class so in this case it looks like a person so uh, after arranging this it is going to predict this as a person with highest probability so what basics are needed to understand about neural networks so uh, mp neuron 
perceptron, sigmoid neuron, and limitations of these loss functions and optimization algorithms. These are all the basics you we wanted to know about the neural networks. Okay, uh, first uh, is artificial neuron. From where this artificial neuron came is from our biological neuron. So this is how the biological neuron looks like. If you correlate this biological neuron with our artificial neuron, so the inputs is nothing but dendrites. Synapse is nothing but the weights. Soma is nothing but our uh, pre-activation function. Axon is nothing but uh, the activation function output, means what we predicted. This is what we can transfer to next neuron in next layer. So uh, next basic model is uh, MP neuron, Macaulay Pitts neuron. This is how the model like. So uh, try to understand here. Uh, I am trying to start with some basics. So very basics. On top of this one concept, I am trying to add one more concept just to build the concept and intuition for you for better understanding. So this is the MP neuron. This is a very basic uh, neuron. Uh, what model is saying is, so uh, what G is, it add all the inputs. G is equal to summation of all the inputs. Maybe I'll use the laser pointer. G, what it is doing is, it is, it, it is just nothing but a summation of all the inputs. What is F is doing is, uh, it is activation function here. How when it will act? So, if summation of all the inputs g of x is greater than b, whatever we choose, then uh, it is giving output as one. If summation is less than b, it is giving output as zero, which means it is giving output either zero or one, which is nothing but here we are trying to do. Uh, we are trying to solve the binary classification task. And here there is only one parameter, which is uh, one parameter we can change, which is nothing but the bias. So uh, this is how data and task look like. And one more point we, what we have to note here is uh, this MP neuron accepts only the data which is in uh, Boolean inputs. So let us uh, assume uh, you are trying to build a model uh, saying you, you are trying to build a model. Uh, these are uh, saying uh, mobile phone is like likable or not. So these are all the available mobile phones. You can get these data from Amazon using your web scrapping script or anything. And uh, these are all the features associated with these mobiles. And we converted those uh, values into Boolean inputs. So what is the parameter B? So um, B lies in between 0 to N. What is N? Here is, N is nothing but the number of features. This launch uh, date, uh, this is one feature, wait, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Till here, these are all the features. So B lies in between 0 to 9, either 0 or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Mean all features are, if all features are off, then means out, uh, the values associated with each feature is zero. If all features are on to that particular mobile, means all are on, all are one. What is the loss function? Let's try with uh, the basic loss function. How do you compute the loss? Suppose this is uh, the uh, ground truth value and this is what you predicted. So what is the loss? We can simply uh, say the absolute difference y minus y hat. So what is the problem of using, uh, if you, uh, what is the problem of having this absolute loss? So if you see here in this case, this is the ground truth, but our model is predicted uh, zero or wrong. For zero, our model predicted one, zero, one, one, zero, means four wrong predictions we made. Right. If you use this absolute loss and sum all these things, this loss is going to nullify zero. One minus one minus one, one is going to zero. 
whenever loss is going to zero which means you predicted exactly what the ground truth is but ideally in this case not because four predictions went wrong how do you correct your model so instead of using this absolute difference we use square error loss this is what uh, this is why we need a square error loss one more point is when you use uh, squared error loss in your machine learning algorithms so uh, when uh, it is uh, required to use the square because uh, the gradients uh, will be calculated if it is a absolute uh, difference then gradients will be zero so in this case if you use the squared error loss then uh, it is giving you output as four which is what uh, four predictions went wrong here this is what we need in this case b is equal to one when i uh, choose this next one is learning algorithm in this case loss is four uh, what our learning algorithm is uh, in which parameter uh, we have to find out the parameter where the parameter loss is going to be uh, close to zero that is what the main goal of this learning algorithm so as b, here only one parameter and which are in finite range 0 to 9 0 1 2 3 and 9 so let's start with one brute force search uh, algorithm i think you might have know about brute force search algorithm so i'll start with one in previous slide if b is equal to one and the loss is equal to four this is what we can see v is equal to one loss is equal to four and that's how uh, you calculate for b is equal to two three four five six seven eight nine out of all these things where my loss is uh, uh, close to zero here it is when b is equal to five loss is close to zero that is what uh, model learned we are we have to use uh, this parameter when uh, in testing and prediction and how do we evaluate after training your machine learning so you have to evaluate with some test data this is what we uh, whatever you learned in regular uh, uh, study in final exam uh, your instructor will ask you some different uh, questions out of what you learned similarly in machine learning also uh, the test data is being used for that so in this case this is correct this is uh, the ground truth this is what your model predicted this is correct correct this is where it went wrong prediction this is uh, correct so out of uh, four three your model predicted uh, three correct answers so that your accuracy of this model is 75 percent so uh, next is uh, here is a sample uh, python code in entire uh, uh, these concepts i am not using any uh, complex frameworks like a uh, pytorch or tensorflow i'm just trying to uh, play with uh, this simple python uh, code so this is the python code uh, which you can play with uh, this mp neuron and how do you interpret the model uh, geometrically so this is the model let us assume uh, uh, for 2d representation i am taking only two inputs x1 and x2 if you uh, expand this e this model equation x1 plus x2 uh, minus 2 is equal to 0 so isn't it a linear equation so from this linear equation can't we draw a line just remember our basics y is equal to mx plus c if you correlate uh, this equation with y is equal to mx plus c so we can easily draw a line equation right here x2 is equal to minus x1 plus 2 minus x1 means uh, slope is negative means uh, this is uh, the negative slope and y intercept is equal to 2 here so the, here is the y intercept what this model is saying is it is finding to draw a line which separates all the positives should lie above this line and negative should lie below the line this is what simply model is saying in 2d representation if you see the same thing in 3d representation it looks like this if you consider three features x1 x2 x3 we can see it in 3d so what are the drawbacks of this one it finds a line means uh, this model is applicable uh, this uh, neuron mp neuron is applicable uh, if your data is linearly separable 
so that we can simply draw a line and separate them and one more drawback is uh, here only one parameter to change that is b and only few possible y intercepts only few possible y intercepts so y is because b lies in between 0 to n n is nothing but number of features what i explained and fixed slope there is uh, here always the slope is negative so to overcome those drawbacks uh, in mp neuron uh, there is one more uh, model that is perceptron model this is the first model with weights so if you uh, closely observe these two models this is the mp neuron model what perceptron uh, model is saying is only one parameter w is added here instead of uh, plain uh, input features w into x greater than or equal to b that is the only difference and one more difference is uh, perceptron uh, can able to process the real inputs and weights for each input these two are the difference so i'm going to show what we are going to achieve with these two changes and what is the data and task so in mp neuron case it accepts only boolean inputs so whereas in uh, uh, perceptron i am saying here real inputs means this data is converted into this we can use the real uh, data this phone let us assume one plus is 35k apple is nothing but 44k like uh, so next question is can we use this data as is no some standardization needs to be done what the standardization is doing is every data entry point value um, make sure it will it lies in between 0 and 1 so if we if we standardize then only machine learning uh, decision engine work properly so after standardization the data looks like this every data entry should lie in between 0 to 1 then what is the geometric interpretation of these two models uh, just now I explained about the 2D representation of MP neuron. This is how the perceptron neuron, uh, uh, perceptron model uh, works. So if you compare x1 plus x2 minus b is equal to 0, x2 is equal to minus x1 plus b. So uh, in this case, only uh, fixed slope, that is negative slope, and few possible y-intercepts with respect to b. So whereas in perceptron, uh, we are dealing with the real inputs, that is one change, and we are associated weights with respect to each and every input feature. With the help of these two, we can, uh, with the help of these two, uh, we can uh, change the slope of uh, these lines. Here is a visual representation of this one. If you see here, so this line is going to change from here to here. why that is because of these weights associated because of these uh, real weights we can uh, change the slope from here 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 and uh, because of the real inputs we can change the uh, we, we can we do have uh, uh, y intercepts many y intercepts as well so that uh, here is a line which classifies above the line all are one below the line this is zero And what is the learning algorithm? Initially, uh, this is a simple learning recipe for this. Uh, initially, you assign uh, randomly assign weights and biases and iterate over the data and compute the loss and update the weights till what you satisfied. Satisfaction factor is uh, loss is going to close to zero. So uh, how does the perceptron learning algorithm look like? So uh, here is the learning algorithm look like. So if your ground truth is saying uh, above the line means positive one, but your model is predicting less than zero means zero, then some correction needs to be done. Means your uh, ground truth is one, your model is saying zero. Means if you co uh, compute the loss one minus zero, some loss is there. So in order to reduce the loss, learning algorithm is helpful. So how learning algorithm do? We need to we need to update the parameters in such a way that w is equal to w plus x or w minus x. This is perceptron learning algorithm. This is the second step uh, we are moving. So why? Uh, so to answer uh, to this question, why in this case we have to add w plus x? In this case, y minus x. So there is one simple math behind this one. 
So let us assume uh, the dot product of two vectors x and y. What is the formula for this one? Magnitude of x and magnitude of y into angle between cosine angle between this, right? So uh, here what it is saying is let us assume. So your uh, x x p uh, means uh, this ground truth is saying lies here. Ground truth is lies here, but your model prediction is here somewhere here. Means what we have to do? We have to move in a direction towards this positive direction. When we are going to move this positive direction from negative to positive, if you observe this cosine uh, lies in between minus one to my, uh, plus one. Indirectly, we have to reduce the angle between these two vectors. So when this uh, angle is going to reduce, if we uh, increase if uh, the angle is going to reduce then the value is going to increase this is what going to happen here so here uh, if you add this uh, w plus x with uh, your w nu then what it is going to do is here uh, cos of uh, alpha this for this value you are going to add some more scalar value which is nothing but uh, your cosine angle uh, is moving towards positive this is what we required what we have to move in this case so uh, will this algorithm always work yes if the data is linearly separable this algorithm always work if it is a perceptron model and how do we evaluate same concept uh, accuracy is equal to number of correct predictions by number of uh, total predictions so here is a toy data set uh, which where we can play around this one so this is the learning algorithm let us assume weights and uh, weights and biases initially arranged uh, like this and with respect to these if you substitute w1 w2 b uh, in this equation we can get uh, m is equal to minus w1 by w2 c is equal to b by w2 so this is what uh, m and uh, c value we are getting if, with these two values if you try to draw a line equation in euclidean space m is equal to minus 1 means negative slope c is equal to 5 means uh, the y intercept is nothing but 5 if you see here 0 and 0 here is the 5. This is our y intercept. Here is our y intercept. So, what we are trying to do is we are trying to find, draw a line which separates positive greens and reds. So, uh, if you uh, substitute x1 and x2 in the model equation x1 w1 plus x2 w2 is greater than or equal to b, then output is 1. If you substitute that, uh, uh, this these values in this model so till here whatever ground truth and your prediction is correct so if you consider here minus 2.5 into 1 and 12.5 into 1 uh, means uh, wi xi value is nothing but 10 10 is greater than b here b is nothing but c uh, c b uh, 10 is greater than 5 what your model is saying is 10 is greater than 5 you are predicting 1 but ground truth is equal to 0 here you are predicting 1 but ground truth is equal to 0 then in that case we have to reduce the weights w minus x this is what we are going to do here so after reducing weight w2 w1 w0 becomes like this whenever these values change if you substitute these values in this equation then m and y intercept is also going to change like this so uh, initially the line equation is this a line is like that but after updating the weights the line is going to be like this this is a positive slope so that li uh, line is like this y intercept is equal to minus 0 0.35 this is where somewhere uh, the y intercept 0 and 0 somewhere here so we are going through uh, the learning algorithm here again if you see here uh, 5 into 3.5 10 into minus 11.50 so obviously negative value is more uh, your model is predicting it as 0 but ground truth is equal to 1 this is where it hit model is predicting 0 
and ground truth is equal to 1 we have to update weight uh, like this after updating weight and uh, m and uh, y intercept is going to change finally you ended up like this this is what the model is converged this is what we can say with this perceptron learning algorithm with some toy data set and is this all the freedom that we need uh, means this model is not applicable if uh, uh, the data is not linearly separable then uh, how do we uh, make some progress about this one next one is the sigmoid neuron the basic building block of a deep neural network so before talk uh, before going to talk about this one what are the limitations of this uh, perceptron algorithm so it is very harsh in boundaries means it is trying to give you output of z either zero or one uh, in 2d representation can't we represent it like a step function like this so if you represent a step function like this so suppose uh, you are trying to predict a more uh, predict uh, suppose uh, this is the data set you are uh, you have given and uh, you are trying to predict whether this person who is earning this much uh, salary uh, will able to buy a car or not so what perceptron learning algorithm is saying is if a person is uh, earning more than 50.50k uh, means 50.1k salary he is able to buy a car if a person is earning 49.9k uh, your model is saying no he can't buy a car but ideally this doesn't make sense because the difference between these two are very small maybe he can afford to overcome this uh, uh, drawback uh, very harsh boundaries right uh, the sigmoid neuron sigmoid neuron comes into the picture this is how the sigmoid neuron uh, model looks like 1 by 1 plus e power minus wx plus b so if you substitute any w x and b values the model curve looks like this one instead of a step function harsh boundaries instead of step function harsh boundaries it is giving you a s shaped curve bound uh, mean at boundaries the function is smoother this is what going to change with the help of these smooth boundaries even we can perform a regression task as well instead of classification what is regression task so uh, same example uh, person is able to buy a car or not if uh, the family size is 8 and salary is 11 lakhs per annum these are all the data what perceptron is doing is it is giving you a harsh boundary it is uh, uh, drawing like this in sigmoid uh, neuron it is giving some uh, some probability if a person is earning 49.9k maybe 80 percent he can afford he can buy a car instead of saying no whereas in perceptron sigmoid neuron is saying 80 percent chance he can buy a car that is what uh, this uh, sigmoid neuron is going to uh, give you and how does this function uh, looks like this is uh, one illustrative view uh, suppose this is the model you arrange uh, some values here is a small video just uh, have a look at it so if you change the w if you change the w if w is uh, more negative uh, this is how it looks like so if uh, more negative uh, if w is equal to minus 5 this is how it looks like so uh, for positive this is a positive slope if more and more positive if more and more positive it looks like this so if b is equal to negative this uh, this curve is going towards a right side why right side if you see here wx plus b is equal to 0 x is equal to minus b by w if b is equal to more negative x is equal to positive that's where uh, x is going towards 0 and positive direction so if you want to uh, make your curve to move left b should be more positive 
so uh, during your learning uh, uh, during your learning uh, stage with respect to this model uh, your curve oscillates like this in order to separate the uh, data this is the loss function which we are using already uh, mean square error loss and next section is the gradient descent algorithm so this is a better learning algorithm uh, so what gradient descent rule is saying is uh, we have to move in a direction opposite to the gradient this is a uh, learning algorithm what is the purpose of learning algorithm is uh, again uh, we have to make sure it helps in reducing the loss close to zero so when the loss is close to zero this algorithm gradient descent rule is saying is we have to move in opposite direction uh, this opposite direction is nothing but this negative opposite to the gradients this is what it is saying if you want to know why what is the maths behind this one is i hope uh, you might have heard about the taylor series uh, in our schooling days that is uh, that concept that math concept is being used in gradient descent algorithm so here uh, is a simple math explanation about it so this is your loss uh, when w and b after updating uh, this is the new loss what is our in interest is after updating weight and w our loss should be uh, greater uh, our loss should be less than the previous loss loss of uh, previous loss should be greater in other way loss of uh, previous loss should be greater than uh, the updated weight loss so if you apply a taylor series on this one this is what uh, we get this is what we interested in the updated loss should be less than the previous loss so again uh, the dot product of this one is equal to this when this going to be uh, our interest is to achieve uh, to satisfy this condition this dot product value should be less than 0 when this dot product value will be less than 0 let's consider these two are vectors again linear algebra so these two are vectors when this value uh, dot product should be less than 0 consider cos beta is equal to this one so cos value lies in between minus 1 and minus 1 if you assume k is equal to denominator is equal to k so cos max it can uh, uh, lies in between minus k to uh, plus k right and when this value will be z uh, less than when this dot product this value will be less than when cos beta uh, will be negative when this cos beta will be negative if beta is equal to minus uh, beta is equal to 180 degrees this is what uh, it, gradient descent rule is saying we have to move exactly opposite uh, to the direction of gradient again evaluation so in sigmoid neuron with sigmoid neuron we are trying to uh, do two kind of things classification as well as regression right so if you are using regression uh, task then uh, you have to use a different evaluation uh, uh, technique that is root mean square error which gives a better accuracy so if you are trying to classify using the sigmoid neuron then you have to use the previous accuracy number of correct predictions uh, by total predictions these are all the takeaways uh, from this basics uh, section MP neuron earlier we started with uh, some binary inputs after that move moved to real inputs and weights associated here only one parameter b here uh, weights and biases associated with it here we were doing binary classification here we are doing binary classification in sigmoid neuron we are doing classification as well as regression these are all the models and these are all the loss functions we explained we started with brute force after that perceptron learning algorithm after that we moved towards the gradient descent and accuracy and root mean square error so what is the problem with these uh, neurons uh, see none of them handle the non-linear separable data so all these uh, uh, neurons and models separate if the data is linearly separable so but in real world data is not linearly separable so in that case uh, our quest is can we have more complex functions than sigmoid that is what representation power of functions 
cells this is a very important uh, uh, concept just to understand about uh, the neural networks this lead to why do we need complex functions here is a just a recap of uh, the sigmoid neuron this is how the sigmoid neuron looks like this is the model equation what gradient descent rule is saying is we have to move in a direction opposite to the gradient just remember this word suppose uh, if the data is looks like this one so uh, in this region then only uh, our prediction should be one in outside out uh, whatever uh, these blue dots uh, our prediction should be zero so with this kind of data whatever line you are going to draw uh, here or here any line which is not going to separate uh, these lines uh, this uh, non linear separable data right so in 3d representation this is how it looks like ideally we need some complex function looks like this one but uh, at the same time here we are using uh, gradient descent which is nothing but it is calculating the gradients in order to calculate the gradients the function should be con uh, continuous in nature which then only the function will be differentiable ideally what uh, the function we are we need is the function looks like this one instead of smooth edges smooth curves the function should be continuous like this how do we get uh, these kind of things can we use sigmoid neuron to solve this kind of uh, uh, non linear separable data here is a small video for this if you uh, if you use sigmoid neuron here then uh, whatever uh, w and b values we can't separate uh, the values here if you see here what sigmoid neuron is uh, doing is it is giving a small s shape curve so uh, with this kind of s shape curve uh, we can't separate the data non linear separate uh, data here what do we need only this part has to be one rest all part should be zero but with the help of sigmoid neuron what it is saying is the entire part it is giving uh, predicting it as one which is wrong then uh, how do we uh, write some complex functions uh, to separate the non linear data it's very hard to come up uh, such functions so same example illustrative example what i explained so if you see this and this one uh, we are just arranging the neurons in such a way that to approximate the complex functions what is the mathematical uh, concept behind this one is the illustrative proof of universal approximation theorem what universal approximation theorem is saying is uh, with the help of deep neural network you can approximate any arbitrary function let us assume this is one of the arbitrary function you are going to approximate so uh, if you uh, add the bars like this just with the help of only one function construct this bar and uh, another function construct this bar finally at the end if you add all these bars you can clearly approximate uh, so here in this case approximation is not so good because uh, we can see some gaps here so if you reduce the bar width you can approximate this complex function better illustratively what it is going to do is with one function one bar second function another bar third function third bar if you add these things we can approximate any complex function that is what universal approximation theorem is saying so next how do we construct these bars can we use sigmoid neuron yes we can use sigmoid neuron for this one this is why i uh, showed in extreme cases of sigmoid neuron looks like a step function so with a proper extreme uh, more uh, positive and uh, case uh, the sigma neuron looks like a step function so if you add these two step functions we can uh, we can construct a bar like this so after constructing a bar like this if you arrange the neurons like this then um, we can uh, easily uh, get these bars we can whatever i just explained in universal approximation theorem 
which can be achievable with the help of this deep neural network. That is what I'm trying to convince you. These are all the takeaways. Next section is feed forward neural network. Till here, what we covered is nothing but the basics of the neural network. So our first deep neural network means multi-layer network of neurons. What is feed forward neural network? This feed forward neural network looks like this. So as its name indicates, all information flows in forward manner only. There is no loop. And we are trying to approximate the complex functions. When we can approximate the complex function with the help of these uh, uh, architectures, uh, means if we arrange a multiple sigmoid neuron, means we are adding more non-linearity uh, to the data. This is what uh, we are trying to uh, do. We are trying to uh, classify the things uh, on non-linear separable data. So uh, here is an illustrative view uh, of uh, how sigma neuron looks like. So uh, these are the three neurons. I'm using the same sigma neuron model. Here H1 is nothing but 1 by 1 plus e power minus wx plus b. H2 is same. What y is, uh, y hat is nothing but 1 by 1 plus e power. What uh, the weights it is going to carry forward. So w2 and h1. Here h1 again is nothing but this one. So if you substitute these two in this equation, this is how uh, our model looks like. This is nothing but a complex function. If you add number of neurons and substitute like this, then just imagine how complex uh, your function is. So with the help of, uh, uh, if you draw this complex function with the different weights and biases, you can visualize like this. Instead of step function and smooth edges, uh, we do have a flexibility just like a paper. Wherever we want, we can uh, bend. So by choosing these weights and biases, that is the intention of this one. So with the help of this, uh, we can approximate like uh, this, whatever we want. At this, age, uh, at this uh, area, we can uh, predict one, rest everything can be zero. This is the takeaway from feed forward neural networks. We are trying to solve uh, nonlinear separable data, trying to add more complexity in the functions. And uh, next section is back propagation. This back propagation tells us how neural networks learn. So till now, what we in previous section, what we in went through is the forward pass means input data pass it through the neural network. Finally, you predicted and based on this prediction, we calculated the loss till then, uh, till that point, it is nothing but a forward pass. After calculating loss, we are back propagating those loss values. Why the loss uh, is uh, reached to that point with respect to the parameters. That is what back propagation do. That is, where, that is how neural networks learn. So these are all the learning algorithms uh, with respect to forward uh, propagation and back propagation. So in forward propagation from input layer, first hidden layer to till L minus one layer, we are uh, uh, calculating the activation functions A1 and uh, pre -act uh, activation function H1 and pre activation functions A1 like this. And the end we are going to update what is uh, going to change in back propagation is after calculating the loss function from the last layer to first layer we are computing the gradients with respect to the parameters parameters is nothing but weights and biases here and computing the gradients with respect to layer level and uh, uh, with respect to pre-activation level so how we are uh, back propagating uh, the loss with respect to weight again here we need uh, we are using the calculus in calculus uh, i hope you are aware of uh, the partial derivatives and chain rule of this suppose in this case if you are trying to calculate uh, the loss function with respect to w22 this is how we have to split uh, using the chain rule this is nothing but a chain rule concept we are using in back propagation calculus
and partial derivatives and gradients uh, no matter how complex the function is we can always compute the derivatives with respect to any variable using the chain rule that is what we learned in our maths and we can easily reuse a lot of work so if you calculate one partial derivative we can easily reuse instead of uh, recomputing since from the start we can easily reuse those values and finally uh, the next section is uh, the optimization algorithms so what optimization algorithm is uh, is all about uh, for better learning algorithms okay uh, here is the quick history of uh, deep learning to the context so whatever i explained you universal approximation theorem back propagation this is uh, invented in 89 to 91 in this area so uh, here if you see here let us assume uh, you are back propagating uh, you are computing uh, the loss function with respect to weight back propagation in that case suppose let us assume this value is very small let us assume uh, all these partial derivatives are 0.1 so means 0.1 into 0.1 0.1 uh, means uh, the center value if any partial derivative is small the center value is going to be small 0.1 Uh, to the power of 5 right five partial derivatives so entire uh, value is going to be very very small if this entire uh, value is going to be very very small if you are uh, if you are using this derivative partial derivative dl by dw in your gradient descent algorithm to update the parameter weight and biases which is nothing but this entire uh, here again learning rate is also very small means this entire quantity is very very small which is nothing but ideally your weight is not updating i hope you are following your weight is not updating uh, this is the limitation of uh, uh, the gradient descent algorithm so here is a small python code uh, which describes the gradient descent code with just a simple one for loop so here it looks like this the 3d representation of this one looks like this okay uh, if you observe here uh, what gradient descent algorithm is uh, 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 saying is in 3d representation uh, as i just explained the partial derivatives 0.1 to the power of 5 uh, means very small which means the weight is not getting updated that's where that's weight is not Uh, getting updated up to the mark I means very small quantities weight is getting updated if weight is getting updated very small means your model is not converging when this model is not converging uh, if you see here in gentle slope region model is not converging so in steep area if more slope then your uh, derivative is uh, giving a large value whenever derivative partial derivative is giving large value if you substitute that large value in your weight substitution then it is updating more this is what you can see it here again gentle slope it is uh, weight is not getting uh, so fast very small steps it took these are the observations in gentle slope region uh, the loss uh, gen gentle slope region loss surface weight and biases move very slow in steep region the loss surface weight uh, bias is movement is very fast can we just justify these observations so here is a visual explanation for that uh, justification suppose let us assume this is your function and what is what is nothing but a derivative here uh, derivative is nothing but rate of change of uh, uh, y with respect to x derivative is nothing but rate of change of uh, y with respect to x right uh, here if you see here this is a more slope region steep area here so in this case if you calculate the derivative 
uh, what it is giving is uh, the bigger value uh, 5 minus 2 which is nothing but 3 here here if you see here this is a gentle slope region in gentle slope region uh, what is the derivative 2 minus 1 only 1 in gentle slope uh, the derivative value is small in more slope steep area derivative value is more whenever derivative is more weight is going to update in large steps whenever derivative is small weight is going to update in small steps that is what we uh, saw here in gentle area weight is going to update small steps because of that uh, we can see it like a snake's body but here uh, more slope region weight is going to update more large steps so this is the drawback of this uh, gradient descent uh, uh, algorithm so what is the motivation we need a solution like uh, in less slope gentle slope surface movement should be faster instead of snake's body so uh, that's where uh, different learning algorithms comes into the picture so a gradient descent algorithm anything better than this gradient descent rule yes so to answer to this one uh, there are two, two sub uh, questions we have to ask how do you use the gradients and how do you compute the gradients so if you ask this question how do you use the gradients can you come up with a better update rule this is all uh, talking about different update rules here we are just updating w minus eta learning rate times partial derivative different update rules when you ask this question different flavors comes into the picture gradient descent this is what i explained momentum based gradient descent nestro accelerated gradient descent and when you ask this question uh, what data should you use for computing the gradient means should i use a single data point which comes under stochastic gradient descent if you use uh, the whole uh, data points which is nothing but batch gradient descent and if you use some mini badges that comes under mini batch gradient descent so here is the contour map explanation about this one so here is the 3d representation here is the contour map how can we visualize this one so if uh, the small distance between these contour maps is nothing but steep slope if large distance between these uh, contour maps here if you see here flat surface gentle slope is nothing but okay uh, here is another uh, this is a 3d representation this is the 2d corresponding contour map similarly this is a 3d representation corresponding 2d contour map okay intuition behind the momentum based gradient descent before that uh, what is the drawback again i am repeating uh, a lot of time uh, it requires gradient descent request to navigate to the region whenever it is having a gentle slope from here to here to reach this place it is having a lot of uh, uh, time it requires means so many number of epochs it took so what is the intuition uh, for momentum based gradient descent if i am asking if i am repeatedly being asked to go in the same direction then i should probably gain some confidence and start taking bigger steps in that direction let's uh, come up with some analogy here suppose uh, you are in front of your office and you want to go to some uh, uh, shopping mall which is uh, let us assume 10 kilometers far away so you don't know where to go and how to travel so initially you ask one person where should i go so he may suggest okay go straight nine kilometers and then take a left or right right so you don't know uh, you don't trust him after uh, going some distance again you ask some more person okay am i going in the right direction right so he also says the same thing go straight nine kilometers and then take a right so after uh, traveling some more distance one kilometer you ask some more uh, another person so after keep on asking asking if everyone is uh, saying the same direction go in the same direction then you have some confidence uh, you gain some confidence okay then you can go uh, uh, you can travel in that direction for a long 
and at the same time because of your war confidence you may overshoot uh, the destination point so whenever you overshoot you have to take a u turn to reach your destination just simple analogy all right so uh, how do we convert this intuition into a mathematical equation this is how gradient descent rule uh, looks like some simple correction to this gradient descent rule with respect to maths so uh, this is how the momentum based gradient descent update rule looks like if you simply see this wt minus vt if you substitute this one only this part is extra gamma times vt minus 1 rest everything is same so what is gamma this gamma value lies in between 0 and 1 so what is this vt vt is nothing but uh, the history just like in our analogy how you ask different persons uh, in different uh, after traveling sometime how you ask so and uh, accumulating the history and going uh, gaining some confidence going in that direction so this is the mathematical equation for that wt plus 1 is nothing but the current moment vt is giving you the history again in the same analogy here so if you are about to reach your destination which is uh, 500 meters distance uh, from the place where you are and what you are doing is you are giving less importance to the initial person whatever uh, he said right that is what we are doing in momentum based gradient descent with respect to mathematical formula initial history is zero this is where you ask the uh in front of uh, the gate where should i go and after uh, th here you are accumulating the history here if you see here uh, the final vt is nothing but uh, gamma times t minus 1 gamma times t minus 2 uh, something gamma is very small here means you are exponentially decaying uh, the thing what we are doing is uh, giving more importance to the current step and less importance to the previous and more less importance to the previous this is what exponential decay is this is how the mathematical equation so here is the sample uh, code to describe about the gradient descent uh, here is the momentum based gradient descent uh, if you just see this one uh, small change in the code code is same uh, the way you arrange uh, the for loop the way you call the for loop is different to reach uh, to uh, to co uh, correlate uh, to reach this uh, mathematical equation so uh, here is uh, what the advantage we are getting with respect to momentum based gradient descent so if you see here in gradient descent so from this point to this point to reach if we took 40 epochs so in with respect to momentum based gradient descent we can reach from here to global minima in just 23 epochs just imagine 40 epochs and 23 epochs we can reach global minima here still at some gentle slope region itself then what is the disadvantage of uh, this momentum based gradient descent so in gentle slope uh, gentle slopes uh, it is taking large steps so is it a good approach what is the drawback here so if you see here because of your war confidence uh, you can uh, overshoot you can uh, cross over the destination shopping mall whatever you wanted to reach this might happen in your in our real life as well in that case what we are doing is again we are taking a u turn after you cross again you are taking a u turn with less uh, speed and more asking right so this is what happening with uh, momentum based gradient descent as well from here to global minima you are reaching after reaching the global minima means nothing but our uh, shopping mall destination with because of the momentum it is carrying so it is it may overshoot the global minima and again going in the same uh, different direction so that's where you can observe this uh, jiggle here oscillates in and out at the minima still converges faster than the vanilla gradient descent and how do we correct this one nestro accelerated gradient descent uh, helps in that area so what uh, uh, nestro accelerated grade, uh, momentum based gradient descent what is the drawback here is 
why it is uh, the curve is uh, going to oscillate in global minima is uh, here uh, we are taking the two step uh, uh, which leads to our shoot the global minima here what are the two steps first of all you are accumulating the history you are moving what history is saying after moving to that point again you are uh, moving what your gradient is saying because of these two steps you are encountering that uh, uh, oscillation in the global minima how do we control is uh, with some again some mathematical formula that is nestor accelerated gradient descent nag update rule this is the nag update rule if you see observe this one uh, here there is a few slight change in this update rule compared to momentum based gradient descent so instead of these two steps what it is saying is first move based on the history this is what a temp w temp first move what history is saying is what history is saying is first move and after that instead of uh, uh, here instead of calculating uh, instead of moving what a gradient is saying you calculate the gradient in the temp instead of wt and move in that direction so this is a these are all the basic difference between these two in a mathematical formula so if you see in 2d representation so in gentle slope momentum based gradient descent what it is saying is move uh, take a large steps so here in nag what it is saying is suppose you reached here w uh, wt this one and uh, w temp what it is saying is you calculate the w temp it is saying somewhere here you calculate the derivative at this point and derivative is saying okay this is uh, this one you have to move exactly opposite to the gradient so you move in this direction so like that uh, if you calculate like that then uh, you might be ended up like this instead of ended up here w t in case of momentum gradient descent instead of landing over here we are landing over here with the help of this math equation again uh, this is a uh, python code to simulate this uh, nag okay and uh, what is the stochastic and mini bash gradient descent so uh, here it looks like this this is the gradient descent so if you see here the curve is uh, very smooth so what is stochastic gradient descent if we, here if you see after uh, watching uh, after going through the data point you, we are updating the weights because of so many updates of weights uh, the curve looks like uh, this jiggle here means the problem here in uh, stochastic gradient descent is it is very greedy in decision after seeing one data point we are uh, updating the weight because of updating the weight the curve is going to oscillate here but one advantage is quicker updates instead of suppose your data set is having 1 million data points after going through 1 million data set and just update one weight uh, just one update instead of that for each and every thing you are updating weight so that uh, within less number of epochs you can reach the global minima that is the advantage we are getting uh, with uh, stochastic gradient descent okay what is a uh, mini batch gradient descent uh, instead of updating the weights after each and every data point just uh, go through some batch means some uh, set of data points and then update the weight if your uh, data points are having 1000 if you select the batch as 100 instead of 1000 uh, updates you are making 1000 by 100 means 10 updates you are doing in with respect to mini batch gradient descent if you correlate if you see this one uh the blue curve is a stochastic uh, gradient descent a red curve is nothing but a mini batch gradient descent we can see less number of oscillations so uh, in 2d representation this is how uh, these three uh, sgd and uh, batch gradient descent and mini batch gradient descent look like 
and next one is the uh, adaptive learning rate why do we need adaptive learning rate let us assume in our uh, real world data set some of the data uh, data is uh, sparse in nature sparse in nature means less frequent so whenever uh, less frequent suppose assume one uh, you are trying to predict uh, the movie classification so in that movie classification data set suppose if you are having 1000 uh, data entry uh, data points so out of this you are trying to classify uh, a movie who acted uh, acted uh, demon mad demon is acted right out of 1000 he might have acted only 30 movies out of it that is what you are going to classify that is your task what you are trying to achieve with the model and uh, means whatever movie he acted then only that uh, corresponding output will be uh, active rest all will be zero means this is nothing but a sparse feature not a dense feature means the input frequency is less out of 1000 only 30 input frequency is less so what is the problem if the input frequency is less if the input frequency is less if you see here uh, if you calculate the derivative this is how uh, with respect to the loss function if you calculate the derivative we can say derivative is nothing but directly proportional to the input if input is equal to 0 again derivative partial derivative uh, with respect to the loss function is going to be 0 whenever uh, partial derivative is going to be 0 here your weight is not going to update if your weight is not going to update your model is not going to converge so how do we uh, come up from uh, come out from this uh, problem so that is where the adaptive learning rate comes into the picture so what it adaptive rate learning rate is uh, doing is so whenever you find a sparse feature the learning rate associated uh, with that particular input feature uh, should be large so that you gain some information simple analogy is if i am explaining uh, 10 hours lecture then you can take a break if i am explaining the same lecture in 1 hour uh, in during that 1 hour we have to gain more concept so that is a simple analogy with respect to this one so how do we uh, uh, as its name indicates right uh, uh, it is a adaptive learning rate uh, which is nothing but adagrad is doing adaptive learning rate just consider uh, the gradient descent uh, formula wt plus 1 is equal to wt minus eta into wt adaptive learning rate so we are trying to manipulate only the learning rate only the learning rate how do we manipulate with respect to some history again so here vt is calculated based on the gradients accumulated for a feature input feature if gradient is uh, accumulated more and more uh, then the vt is going to be more large value if vt is large value means the denominator is large then uh, the learning rate will be less for dense features if uh, v- history is uh, vt is uh, uh, not learning more and more Uh, just to avoid divided by zero error we are introducing this epsilon value then learning rate will be more means denominator is less when our denominator is less uh, this value and their value is more means we are learning more this is how we are changing the learning rate ada grad is nothing but adaptive learning rate gradient descent so what is the advantage we are getting with the help of uh, adaptive learning rate so if you see here uh, we started from here uh, and uh, with the help of uh, gradient descent algorithm uh, we are reaching here and then moving across w means from here to here the weights the associated input features associated weight are in sparse nature means less frequent so that weight is not going to update from here to here so after here weight is going to update means uh, the dense uh, weight, uh, features associated with uh, uh, the weight 
are dense in nature so that we are going in this direction finally we are landed up in global minimum so instead of that so if you apply this ada grad right so instead of moving here and here till reach here it is it takes some shortcut from here to here and uh, what is the advantage uh, here is uh, the parameters corresponding to sparse features get better updates and uh, the learn uh, what is the disadvantage here is the learning rate decays very aggressively as the denominator grows and grows grows when the denominator is go grows more uh, means uh, the history is accumulated for the sparse features sorry for the dense features so what is the uh, drawback is if you see here uh, this uh, ada grad is uh, overshooted initially even though it is overshooted initially and it is trying to reach the global minimum because of this learning rate decay it stopped uh, here it it actually it not reached the global minimum it stopped at some point that is the drawback of this uh, ada grad and how do we uh, come up with a better uh, learning algorithm that is with rms propagation this is how uh, the adagrad uh, algorithm is this is how a uh, small change in the rms propagation so what is the advantage is uh, we construct the history in here constructing the history is changed so if you see here the constructing the history this uh, vt constructing the history is only changed here because of this change exponentially decay sum what our disadvantage uh, we faced with respect to ada grad exponentially learning rate decay this we are going to uh, address in this rms propagation this is what some mathematical explanation about this one what uh, ada grad is saying is it is just uh, accumulating the uh, gradients and square so with the help of this beta this beta lies in let us assume beta is equal to 0.9 so again it is exponentially decay we are giving less importance to the previous 0. suppose v4 is equal to 0.9 whole cube into 0.1 means this is very very small quantity because of this history very small quantity uh, the uh, learning rate is not decaying so here uh, with this uh, v4 we can say that uh, we are not giving full importance and we do exponential decay sum of the gradients so in uh, ada grad uh, as i explained right uh, because of the learning rate stoppages which leads to zero uh, because of the dense features so that uh, issue rms propagation is uh, going to address because of this mathematical formula change so if you see here this is how uh, the yellow uh, curve looks like this it reaches the global minima if green curve looks like it stopped at near to the global minima and uh, next one is adam this is the last learning rate uh, learning algorithm i am going to explain uh, adam is nothing but the momentum based gradient descent uh, this one and rms propagation these two advantages uh, it is come up uh, if you take all these two two combining then we do get the adam this is how the mathematical representation looks like so finally if you uh, compare uh, Uh, this is how the gradient descent uh, algorithm uh, looks like in uh, 2d representation this is how adam look like uh, this blue curve the yellow and green curve looks like this uh, the red one is uh, the momentum based gradient looks like this so uh, the take away uh, is uh, after going through all these learning algorithms uh, uh, we might be wondered which combination we have to use so for that um, basically sgd is uh, preferred stochastic gradient descent is preferred uh, if you are okay with uh, uh, less uh, if you are okay to run your model for more number of epochs and less oscillations then suggested uh, Uh, combination is stochastic and gradient descent 
if you want to uh, converge your model quickly then you have to use adam and mini batch with a batch size of 32 64 and so on if you use adam uh, which is nothing but it is a combination of momentum and rms propagation indirectly you are uh, using these two algorithms so with less number of epochs you can converge your model so here is the quick recap about uh, uh, the algorithms so we started with gradient descent uh, update rule after that we slowly uh, uh, slowly changing the mathematical equations that's where uh, we achieved this momentum and nag adagrad rms prop and adam so finally wrap up uh, so a good explanation about the neural network is in uh, just four steps so uh, always what i suggest you is uh, try to understand the concept in plain english and uh, after that uh, try to visualize uh, the whatever uh, explanation is with visual explanation and try to understand from math point of view if uh, if a mathematical equation what is going to change how uh, your visual representation is going to change and finally with a pseudo code to implement the algorithm so that you can play uh, with the different uh, weights and biases and different inputs so after going to uh, if you learn all these things then uh, this is one of my favorite uh, uh, image so initially i when I, I start explaining about understanding about uh, in plain algorithm uh, my expression will be like this and after that this 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 so uh, the conclusion is uh, i started with confusing buzzwords and basics i provided with respect to mp neuron perceptron and sigmoid and i explained about the limitations of these neurons and uh, the representation power of functions uh, where i explained about uh, how we are constructing the complex functions uh, to solve non linear separable data and uh, again uh, the feed forward neural networks uh, which is going to use uh, the universal approximation theorem uh, and the back propagation we are using the calculus uh, chain rule and optimization algorithms these are all the al algorithms uh, we just went through and their advantages and what is the best combination we wanted to choose in our real world problem so and a few resources uh, is these two are the interesting books uh, what i went through uh, along uh, through the blogs deep learning from scratch and uh, deep learning illustrated i recommend it for you to go through these two books yeah now finally it's time to take question and answers the you uh, one who asked so uh, if you if you want to use uh, uh, this uh, learning algorithm right uh, so sgd uh, just start with sgd stochastic gradient descent uh, algorithm so and after that you just uh, try with adam and uh, with respect to the food and waste uh, uh, thing right uh, first of all uh, if i were you uh, then uh, i try to uh, start from this point uh, what is the task i am going to uh, achieve right in in your case food and waste are you trying to uh, do a classification or regression that is the first question you have to ask yourself after that uh, so uh, i'll start with a simple convolution neural network uh if you are not uh, till that mark uh, i suggest you to start with a sigmoid neuron with a uh, uh, few layers three layers what i explained in my session feed forward neural network and add some back propagation and try how your uh, model is trying to converge if you are uh, familiar with a convolution neural network right uh, maybe you can use with a lstm I hope I answered your question. Yeah, uh, this uh, has a, a many information. Yeah, uh, George, uh, it's a many information because it is not a small uh, subject. It is a huge subject, so it is very difficult to uh, give all the subject uh, at one shot. 
yeah uh, someone asked about uh, show the books okay these two are the books deep learning from scratch and uh, deep learning illustrated and uh, not only uh, don't restrict uh, to these books and uh, be open to all the resources available blogs and if you go through any books uh, then uh, you can go in a flow you can understand your concept uh, in a better way that's what i suggest Yes, uh, we are having the recording of this session. So, in terms of accuracy, which algorithm you recommend uh, predicting the sales? Uh, right. So, uh, in terms of accuracy, predicting the sales. Uh, right. Uh, so, depends on the data. What I explained. You start with a feed-forward neural network. and try to uh, use the accuracy if you are trying to do a classification then use uh, the accuracy if you are trying to uh, predict uh, uh, the regression algorithm use uh, root mean square error uh, and for projects like skin cancer detection which method of okay skin cancer detection suppose uh, uh, sujay uh, if your data is uh, image right if your data is image uh, then uh, convolution neural network is giving you a better accuracy start with a uh, cnn convolution neural network with uh, different uh, model parameters and try to hyper uh, tune the hyper parameters to get your accuracy yeah which algorithm uh, would recommend use for uh, reduce of food wastes so uh, that's what i suggested right if you are familiar with uh, vgg or lstm then uh, go ahead and uh, start using that or else recurrent neural network also giving you a better uh, thing there has been a high interest in framework such as tensorflow pytorch um, both for python and then uh, later r libraries have been added what is the current interest uh, this framework is anyone better to learn from than the other yeah uh, in this question what i suggest you is uh, most of uh, the companies uh, everyone is using the pytorch which is in python so why pytorch is uh, with this pytorch framework we do have flexibility so we can change uh, the model uh, whatever uh, however we want uh, instead of tensor flow i recommend pytorch for this one yeah i never mentioned uh, lstm because uh, uh, this is a beginner session so these are all the basics uh, first of all to understand about this lstm or cnn or uh, vgg lxnet znet uh, any architecture these are all the basics uh, first of all we wanted to know george so uh, if you are uh, that's why i name it as a deep learning for beginners so if you are familiar with this one then uh, you can uh thank you uh thanks for all your compliments uh if you still have any questions you can post it here
yeah as i just explained right uh, any neural network explanation initially it looks like uh, something is lacking so we can't understand the neural network in one shot after having uh, after go through all the resources and uh, try to do some hands on then only we got to know the concept behind this just add some math behind uh, to that concept then uh, the subject will be very interesting so uh, i always recommend uh, don't directly start with uh, cnn convolution neural network and lstm or vgg so just start with uh, some basics visual studio for mac it is available for mac as well visual studio is nothing but an ide which we can install it on uh, any os windows or mac or linux Okay, thanks, Raj. Well, uh, sorry, I took uh, some more time uh, just to explain this concept. Uh, even I might be faster because to uh, I wanted to give uh, all the information. So even though if you have any doubts, you can uh, reach out to me. You can connect with me via LinkedIn. we can learn together <laughs>